Welcome to Josh's Green Garage. In this video, I'm going to do a video comparing a John Deere 100 series lawn tractor to a 700 series garden tractor. Now this video, the whole purpose is essentially if you're someone that's looking for these maybe on the used market and you're wondering why there's such a price difference, I'm going to attempt to show why that is. You may be wondering how come they both cut grass, they're both green and yellow, one of them may be like $500 used, the other one people may be asking upwards of like 20000 So huge price difference, there's you know tractors that fit price, distance, price differences all between here, uh, but these are the two extremes and I'm going to walk you through the differences. I first want to mention uh, some specs about these, uh, but first I want to make it clear that the whole purpose of this video uh, isn't intended to put one of these two down or talk the other up. Uh, both of these machines, very great machines. Uh, I've had one similar to this E100 before, so I know how they work. Um, but both are both are great machines. Uh, you're, you're not looking really at junk here per se. So essentially what we got here, this is a 2019 John Deere E100 lawn tractor. This is the kind of tractor you can get these, uh, you know, the John Deere dealer, of course, but you can also find them Lowe's, Home Depot, uh, stores like that. Uh, these are, you know, at the lowest end, these are entry level, you know, residential, as some would say. Um, they're not built very heavy. Uh, this tractor weighs just a little over 400 pounds, and I'm not sure if that includes the deck or not. Uh, but it's pretty light, uh, but it does a great job at just cutting grass. You know, simply what it's designed to do. Over here, we have the X758. Now, this is John Deere's essentially highest end garden tractor. Uh, you cannot get these at Lowe's or Home Depot. These are, you know, dealer exclusive. You have to go to a John Deere dealer to get them if you're getting it, you know, new, of course. But uh, <clears throat> this one tips the scales at, well, right now it's a little heavier, but uh, factory without the deck, you know, you're tipping the scale at a little over a thousand pounds. So you got quite a bit more sh machine here. Uh, which, you know, adds to capability quite a bit. And we'll get into why that is, why it's so much heavier. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to answer some questions you might have. So I'm going to start at the front and just work my way back on each. Uh, I'm going to try to hit just some, some key points. I'm not going to get too much into numbers and crazy details. I'll get into a little bit of the basic numbers and stuff, but... I'm not going to go super crazy. It's not really the point of this video. More so, like I said, showing you why one of these costs what it does over the other. So first we'll start out with the E100 here. Uh, this is just your basic riding mower. Uh, it's not intended to do ground engaging garden work. Uh, not like the 758 would be. But <clears throat> I want to start out with just the front axle. The front axle you can see here is a cast iron axle. It even says cast iron on it. Uh, it's serviceable to an extent. You have a grease fitting there, and then you have grease fittings on the wheels. So the wheels and the axle all kind of work together, of course, on the front end. So it gives you your steering and all. Uh, but it's not the heavy, a heavy-duty axle, really. I mean, the fact that it has a lightning hole there in the center is not the greatest, uh, but it does its job. You have grease fittings that you want to make sure you maintain on these as there are no bearings here. So you don't have a bearing inside the steering, you know, knuckle area, whatever you want to call it there. Uh, and then you don't have bearings on the wheels either. It's just a plastic bushing. So you want to make sure those are lubricated at all times. That way you don't start wearing parts out and then having, you know, loose shaky wheels that eventually is going to ruin your steering. So the front end on these, literally just there to hold wheels and steer. That's about it. You can also see wheels and tires, not the biggest on these. Uh, they don't really need to be. Depending on what model you get, these may have bigger tires. Um, or I know they'll at least have bigger wheels. I'm not sure how much bigger the tires get when you get into the higher end, like, uh, you know, the 180s, uh, the 170s, things like that. 
if we move over to the x700 here you can see a lot bigger wheels and tires uh, this one kind of an outlier because it's four-wheel drive so it has a way heavier axle on it uh, this one, you know, has the four-wheel drive motors on the ends to give you front-wheel assist. Uh, just way beefier and way wider. And this is actually, you know, weight capable. You can put, you know, John Deere sells a weight bracket for this. Nine, nine weights. You can put nine 42-pound weights on it. So quite a bit of weight you can put on there. And, I mean, it, it's made for it, so... You have a lot of extra utility when you can add a lot of weight to the front of the machine because you know when it comes down to it when you're doing any kind of groundwork you need weight so that's important we're going to move up to the hood and what's under the hood next both hoods are going to be of a plastic material the one on the 700 is a, a special type of plastic material i can't remember the name off the hand i'll put it in the video um but they also do a uh i think it's called like a paint and mold type design it's not just straight up plastic injection molded like this so it's a little bit of a different process there i'm not going to get into that too much headlights both have uh incandescent headlights from factory the x700s i have upgraded to leds and you can upgrade the 100s to leds if you choose going under the hood of the 100 series now this is going to be similar on all 100 series no matter if it's a d105 like i had an e100 and even the new you know s 100s um, you're going to find a 17 and a half horse briggs and stratton john deere branded engine under there this engine isn't a bad engine if you take care of it i mean it has some power not the most it's the smallest in the line but it's not like some other tractors out there that may only have like 10, 12 horse motors, you know. You do have an oil filter on there you can service, serviceable air filter and everything. My old 1980 210 doesn't even have an oil filter that you can service on it, so a little bit different. But uh, they're a decent little engine. They're not intended to be a long life engine. I mean, if you take care of them, they'll last a good a good long while but uh, they don't have anything on them that makes them any kind of extended life or they're they're not a commercial series engine when you move up to higher models in the 100 series you'll get a bigger engine you can get up the rest of them i think are all twin cylinder engines and then they are higher horsepower you get up into 22 horsepower and i think they top out at like 25 horse so you get a lot more power the X758, on the other hand, you can have it in two different engines. Uh, well, sorry, not the 758, but the 700 series. Uh, if you get older ones, there's different engines as well as far as displacement. But this one specifically has a 24-horse, three-cylinder Yanmar diesel engine in it. And it is liquid-cooled, whereas every other tractor in John Deere's current lineup, every other series, I should say, is uh, air-cooled. So there's a lot more you have to maintain on these. These are designed, these are a commercial engine, commercial grade, including the gas engine you can get. So the gas engine is the second kind, and it's a, a Kawasaki V-twin engine. Uh, and these are all horizontal shaft as opposed to vertical shaft. They are shaft driven back to the transaxle, not belt driven like everything else. You do have a lot more to maintain, as I mentioned. Uh, since they're liquid cooled, you have radiators in there and then you have a transaxle cooler that you got to make sure everything stays clean. So you run into more maintenance with these, but it's worth the trade off in power. That's for sure. Next, I'm going to go down and talk about the frame on these tractors. So I mentioned in the beginning the weights of these tractors. And uh, one thing that goes along with weight is the sturdiness of the frame and how heavy the frame is. So if we look at the 100 series, the front of the frame here, it's exposed. You can see it's not very thick metal. And you can see the height of it going back is not the tallest. 
you can see going all the way back it's essentially one height of the frame so it's not too strong it's all bolted together on these it's not really welded you don't have any ridiculously thick cross members anywhere it's essentially just a a light frame designed to hold all the components and we'll look into this a little more at the back when we look at the 700 you can see the front part of the frame here a lot thicker everything on here is welded together you have a built-in front weight bracket this weight bracket will hold four 42 pound suitcase weights you also have a one and a quarter inch receiver hitch and if we look at this frame it's kind of narrow up front as far as height because the engine's there steering and all but uh, it quickly gets a lot taller you can see how high up the frame goes much more beefy much more weight capable it's welded and this adds to the weight of this machine a lot adds to the utility a tractor like this you can't even really put front weights on they sell a little front bumper you can get for it but you can't put weights it's not designed to hold weights that front axle just won't be able to take it the little bushings and the wheels won't be able to take it when you get up into the 700 series that are two-wheel drive like this it's still going to have a similar wheel attachment but it's actually going to have bearings in there this one's a five bolt style since it's four-wheel drive but the two-wheel drive ones will have bearings but it'll still attach you know similar just with a a single uh spindle I'm going to move next to the operator station simple operator station on the 100 series tractors you got your throttle here move it all the way forward that's your choke position i kind of like it on these more than i did the x580 that i had that had a separate lever for the choke it was kind of weird so this one's kind of convenient with just one lever that yellow button there is the reverse implement option so you hold that down to go backwards when you're mowing to stop from killing the machine when you go into reverse and then your park brake there down here you have your brake pedal moving back you have your deck height lever steering wheel of course your ignition switch which is also your headlight control and then that yellow lever is a manual pto not all of them are manual PTOs. When you go a little bit higher in the 100 series, you get into electric PTOs. This is your, I don't want to call it throttle pedal because it's not throttle, but it's your go forward or backward pedal, depending on how you have this selected. This is your forward and reverse selection. And you have a cup holder. Seat's pretty basic. This isn't a high back one. The higher 100 series have a high back seat. It is adjustable, that little tab sticking out there. You can slide it forward and back. And then it does have some seat suspension, just some springs there. Uh, they're not adjustable in any way though. You kind of get what you get there. If we go over to the 700, there's a lot more going on. You still have just a single throttle control these ones are all going to be electronic fuel injected though so you don't have to worry about any kind of choke or anything on these the yellow button again reverse implement option i hate it on this one the x500 series has it way better it's bigger and it's shaped it's not just a little round tiny button or anything it looks a lot better got some switches here you have a 12 volt outlet on the machine and then some light controls so you can turn the 12 volt outlet on and off and then you have off for your lights you have headlights only well and then the tail lights will just come on uh, and then you have for the rear work lights so it has reverse lights and when you turn that rear work light on it turns those reverse lights on all the time so that's pretty nice down here on the floorboard you have differential lock very convenient feature this is on all the x500 and 700 series tractors really worth that upgrade gives you a lot of extra traction mower deck height adjustment down on the floor here this is pretty common for 
I think a lot of the tractors uh, that have any kind of like foot assisted, you know, selection. I don't, I don't think there's too many that don't have it here on the floor now. Steering wheel, a little bit bigger and it is adjustable for tilt. I don't know that any of the 100 series have a tilt wheel or not. Uh, they may when you get up into the 170 and 180. Then on this side, we have our cruise control here. Park brake is here. Our ignition switch here, which doesn't have the lights, obviously, because they're on the other side. This is the PTO engagement. It's a electrically, well, not electrically driven. Uh, this obviously is an electric switch, but it's a hydraulically driven PTO. Oh, sorry, hydraulically engaged PTO, I should say. <laughs> Uh, and then these are your hydraulic control levers, which we'll get into those a little bit more. Down here you have your park brake up top, and then your twin touch hydrostatic pedals forward and reverse, depending on how hard you push down on them, it's how fast you go. You have a cup holder again, a little nice and closed toolbox, and a convenient little spot there where you can put your phone charger cable through. And a 12 volt outlet that you can hook up to. The seat on this guy, more commercial, it's bigger, it's a lot more cushioned. You have the option to put armrests on it. It has a little like reclining feature, you can adjust the angle at the back. Nice embroidering on there. And the material is uh, more of like a sewn, I don't know if it's quite leather, but I think it might be actually. It just feels a lot better than the vinyl on the other ones. So really nice seat there. Now one thing I forgot to mention is the display. You have a little display on the 100 series and that's all you're gonna get on all of them really. It's just an hour meter, a little maintenance reminder. When we come over to the X700 series, you get a really big display. Shows you a lot of different information. I'm not gonna go through it all right now, but really nice display. Going back to the frame real quick, and I always forget to point this out. I say always because I did this video two other times trying to get it right. And I screwed it up, but you can see the tunnel here in the center, how high that is bumped up. And you can see the frame under the tractor. Well, the frame takes up all that space. So it kind of helps you show the height. I don't know if you can tell really how tall that is, but it's pretty tall. And then if you look over there at the 100 series, it's pretty flat. There's not a lot going on. We can come down here look under you still can't see the frame and there it is very narrow frame so that's just another one of those differences this tractor is definitely easier to get on you don't have to step over that hump but uh it's just something else to kind of look for as far as frame thickness on these machines we're gonna move into the back now and the back is probably the most obvious difference other than the initial size of the two machines. And this is where a lot of utility comes to play. So with the 100 series, you don't have a lot here. This piece has some little holes and stuff. There's a couple different attachments you can put on here. This one specifically uses a bagger that gets attached. I just don't have it on right now. Uh, but you cannot get any kind of three-point hitch. You can't get a sleeve hitch for these, nor do you want to use those. And I wouldn't recommend trying to get like any kind of aftermarket one and somehow modifying this to make it work because the frame here, it just isn't strong enough for it. You have a little tow hitch there where you can put tow behind attachments. And if you wanted, you could put a hitch ball, maybe move like a jet ski trailer or something around. But, uh, don't try pulling anything crazy or super tongue heavy. One of the reasons that you don't have the utility with this kind of machine is this right here, the transaxle. 
on the D105, the E100 like this, maybe back into the L or LA series, uh, they use these transaxles that are really light, really small, and that's actually a plastic housing. So I can show you around the front here. It's not a very big transaxle. Like I mentioned, it's plastic. You can look kind of right through the frame in there. See the the belts in there. You know, it's not very tall. There's not a lot going on. And then the support for the axle ends right here. You can see that silver in there. That's the axle shaft. It's not supported very much once it leaves that transaxle and goes out to the wheel. This black piece is just a little plastic cover on there. But this transaxle just is not designed to do any kind of heavy work, uh, you know, beyond holding the rider. Uh, you don't want to put too much weight on this axle. Also, if you look at the wheels out at the end there, you see how it just goes right to the wheel from the axle. There's essentially just a keyway on there and that wheel's keyed to the axle. So you don't really have the biggest footprint as far as that, you know, wheel being connected to the axle, so. That's why when you're looking at lawn tractors, most of them are just going to have a little cover in the back. You're not going to have bolts like you would a garden tractor with a five bolt pattern or some of them will have a four bolt pattern. But you kind of want to stay away from these plastic ones. If you're looking at the lowest, you know, most affordable machines, uh, the S100 currently uh, is a little bit better. They upgraded those to a hydrostatic and it has an aluminum housing now so you have a little bit better axle on there so that's good they they upgraded those if we go over here look at the transaxle on the x700 this one's pretty decked out we got the three point on back here we got the pto unit on there but you can see this transaxle starts there way at the bottom and then the height of it goes all the way up to the fuel tank. And then if you look over here, you can kind of see the, the axle housings there. You can see how thick the housing is and it goes out even under that wheel weight a little bit. So the axle shafts support it a lot more. The axle shafts are also a lot, a lot thicker on these. And then you can't see it again because of the wheel weights, but these axles, um, they have a five bolt pattern on the end that connects to the wheel. So more automotive style. And that's one of those things that kind of helps kind of identify a garden tractor as opposed to a lawn tractor. This axle, really expensive if you ever had to replace one. You could pretty much buy that tractor probably three times over by the time you replace this transaxle. So definitely built way heavier, way more heavy duty, a lot more utility. You can hook up a tiller to this, till the ground. You can put a box blade on here. You can do a lot of different stuff with these that you can't do with really any of the other series tractors. The 500s you can do a little bit with, you can put a sleeve hitch on, but it's still not the same utility as the 700. want to talk about hydraulics the x700 series and even some of the older the older x5 so like something that says like x585 so if it ends in a five um, you're also going to have this similar type of frame with hydraulics but you have an scv here with two hydraulic circuits so you can run hydraulic powered equipment on there you can put a hydraulically powered snow blade on this and it has hydraulic lift as well as angling so that's a really neat feature that really none of the other tractors have this 100 series has no hydraulics whatsoever and when you get into something like the uh the 300 and the 500 series when you get high enough in there you can get a hydraulic lift but that's all it is you're not going to have the option to have any kind of hydraulic outlet on it. Those hydraulics are powered conveniently by these little levers here. But you have hydraulic deck lift and that also works the three point. 
I mentioned earlier, this one is shaft driven from the engine to the transaxle. And that drives the PTO as well, so you have a lot better power transfer. You don't have to worry about a belt slipping. This machine, obviously the PTO itself is right out of the engine, being it's a vertical shaft engine. But it uses a belt to drive the transaxle, so there's potential for some power loss there. And then the deck is driven directly off of that PTO, which is kind of nice. However, uh, it is a belt driven deck rather than shaft driven. So you have a little bit more potential to lose some power there to the blades. So yeah, just do a little walk around. You guys can look at them. I kind of mentioned front tires. I'll mention it again with uh, rear tires as well. You can see there's an obvious size difference there. The 700 has big 26 inch tires, 12 wide on it. And you can see they're weighted up on here too. There's 200 pounds of wheel weights on that currently. Oh well, plus another 50 for the inner weights. But on the 100 series, you're not gonna have any ability really to put any wheel weights on them. Smaller wheels, the tires on this are only 20 inch tall. If you get into the the 170s and the 180s, you're going to have bigger tires on those. They're just taller. And you get more features. So, you know, these things are like cars. You know, you, you get a higher trim, you get more features. With the X700s, it's a little bit different. You pretty much get all the features on all of them. You're more so picking whether or not you want a diesel or gas engine. Or if you want two-wheel steer, four-wheel steer, two-wheel drive, or four-wheel drive. Whereas on these, you're literally picking, okay, do I want, like, rear fenders in the back? Do I want cruise control? Do I want a two-cylinder engine? Or do I want, you know, a 25-horse motor or just a 17-and-a-half? Do I want a 42-inch deck or do I want a 54? One thing that I almost forgot to mention... You don't see any mower decks under either of these tractors. I have them off right now for sake of the video. Let's go inside and uh, look at the differences between the mower decks on these two tractors real quick. Another thing I want to talk about in the uh, big differences between a lawn tractor and a garden tractor, you know, something that you may not quite understand if you're unaware of these differences and you're looking at these things, whether it be on like a Facebook market, Craigslist, you know, anything like that, and you're seeing just a, a basic picture that doesn't go into a lot of detail, normally you're not gonna see these two side by side. So all the differences might not be quite so obvious, but uh, essentially I'm sure you can tell uh, which one is gonna be for the garden tractor, which one's for a lawn mower, uh, lawn tractor. But essentially over here, we have a 54 inch high capacity deck and this here is a 42 inch edge mower deck. Um, some of the key differences that you'll see like John Deere advertise is how much deeper the 54 high capacity is as opposed to something like this 42 inch deck. You can see at the back end how much extra height there you have as opposed to this. And that extra height allows you to process more grass a lot faster uh, you can cut taller grass. So that's one of the big differences uh, as far as like the basic design. Uh, next you have the metal that it's made of. So these are both stamped decks. Uh, however, the metal on this one is a lot heavier. This one's pretty light. I can't remember the exact gauge uh, of that one, but this deck has a nine gauge steel deck. I want to say these ones are like, I don't know, 11 or... It'd be a higher gauge, but less thickness. I'll have to look it up, but I'll put that in the video. But there's a big difference there between the two. I mean, this deck, incredibly heavy. This deck, easy to pick up. It takes quite a bit just to tilt this deck back, whereas this one, you can lift it up pretty easy. This one, you can uh, pull out from under the mower really easily. Uh, this deck over here, you're not pulling that out from under the mower. So that's the... Uh, Big difference in construction itself. Uh, next I'll talk about the gauge wheels. That's kind of a pretty obvious difference between the two. So on the 42 inch edge deck, you can see you just have uh, a couple rollers on the front. 
Uh, these are slightly adjustable. If you come in there, you can see you got a couple different holes you can put those in to kind of adjust where they ride. But that's it, minimal adjustability. The deck like this, you have four wheels that come standard on them. These gauge wheels are not cheap, by the way. Um, and you get all those little circles. Those are all an increment at which you can adjust the height of these. Um, and then down here, I don't know how well you can see it, but they're also greasable. So the gauge wheels you have on these decks, way more substantial. You also have the option for a nose roller wheel up here. It's something else you can add that you just don't get on a smaller deck like that. These edge decks, like this one specifically, wouldn't really benefit much from a middle middle deck roller. Uh, the 54 that you would find on like an E180 or an S180, that would for sure benefit from a mid roller. Uh, they may even have them, I'm not sure. Another, I guess, difference uh, is the way they're driven. So yes, the blades on each are belt driven. However, there's a difference in the way that it actually connects to the tractor. So on your standard lawn tractor, you're just gonna have some excess belt here, and that's gonna connect to the PTO that essentially just comes off the engine of the tractor. It connects to that, and then when you engage the blades, there's a cable that pulls on this tensioner, tensions everything together, and that engages the blades. When that's detensioned, you have a blade break here and here, and that essentially stops these spindles from spinning. There's some slack and the PTO just spins uh, against that belt. On the garden tractor, and I mean, things that are considered a garden tractor aren't always gonna be this way. Uh, but if you're looking at something like an X700, uh, you're gonna have a shaft driven deck like this. So here you have an actual drive shaft that connects to the PTO on the tractor the mid PTO and it's on, it's located on the transaxle. So it's not direct off the engine. Uh, and that's what gives power to this gearbox. Spins a pulley down there that's connected to the belt and that drives all the blades. So uh, you have quite a bit different setup there. Uh, you also have more maintenance because of it though. So that's kind of one of the downsides when you get into the bigger, heavier duty machines there's a lot more maintenance to go along. This mower deck, you have just two spindles you gotta grease and then a couple spots you gotta put some lubricant on. This mower deck, there's a lot more involved. You gotta grease each wheel. Uh, you gotta grease this drive shaft because that can slide back and forth. You have a U-joint on either end that needs greased. You have a gearbox that gets oil. And then you have three separate spindles uh, that are all gonna get grease as well. So quite a bit more to maintain on these decks. And then of course, rather than two blades on something like this, you have three blades on this one. Talking about blades, uh, you also have spindles that you uh, have a major difference in. So if you look at this spindle for the mid blade here, you can see how large that is as to where it bolts on. Uh, it's, it's a very big spindle. A uh, big heavy duty pulley, grease fitting right on top. Uh, and then if you come over here and look at something like these, you can see it's quite a bit smaller. Your grease fittings just on the side or the back. Um, bearings aren't near as big. So something like this can hold a lot more grease, can dissipate heat a lot better. The bigger bearings altogether, it's just gonna last a lot longer. So big difference in the spindles there, heavy duty spindle versus you know, just your kind of more economy line spindle. However, just because they're economy doesn't mean that those are cheap spindles. Spindles are expensive no matter what it is. My 1980 210, you know, to replace spindles on that would be more than I'd ever want to spend just because of the age of the machine, honestly. Um, can't remember offhand how much they are, but they're not cheap. On this one right now, I don't have the spindle covers on. That way I could kind of show you guys the spindles, but essentially another difference is the spindle covers that you're gonna see amongst decks. These ones, they just screw right on. Uh, they're not easy to just get off in a pinch to either clean underneath them, to clean around the spindle, 
or to grease the spindle. There's a hole cut out that you can get a grease gun in there, but it's not gonna be uh, super intuitive. You pretty much have to take the deck off, if I remember correct. I don't know that you can quite have, well, there might be room to get those off without taking the deck off, but it's not the easiest. Something like this, and even the, what is it, the Excel Deeps that are on the 300 series John Deere's and the current 500 series Deere's as well as a bunch of like the zero turns and stuff like that. Uh, even at Lowe's and Home Depot, the zero turns there actually have the edge, or sorry, not edge, the uh, Excel Deep decks. But essentially they have way better spindle covers. So these ones, easily removable, you just pull up on it, it comes right off. And you can, you have your grease fitting there, you can blow air into there, clean them out, whatever you need to do. On the Excel Deep decks, these are spring-loaded. They just kind of fold up, so it's really easy to maintain those with them on the tractor. Uh, these are also a drive-over style. You can actually drive over this deck, whereas these ones you don't. Um, I don't see why you really couldn't, but you're definitely going to damage your spindle if you do. Uh, these are designed to be driven over. You can even see some tire tracks on there. So big difference in spindle covers. Uh, and there again, these are all things that like, you know, it doesn't seem like a lot, but when you think of like the extra parts that are needed, the extra stuff to be designed and whatnot, you know, everything that goes into these decks, there's a reason why like certain stuff costs more or is more heavy duty than others. Another thing I'll point out is just the draft arms. So this is the front draft arm for this 54 inch high capacity deck. You can see how thick it is, how big it is. And then this is the draft arm on the edge deck. So it's probably like half the thickness or less. And it's just a single little arm. I mean, you have adjustability there, but it's by no means as sturdy as what you have on here. There again, that plays into the weight of the deck. This deck, I wanna say, I can't remember exactly, but I think it's like 230 or 50 something pounds. It's a heavy deck. And this one's like less than 100, uh, probably less than 80. I don't know, I'll have to look. I'll put all those numbers in there though for you. So there's a big weight difference, you know, when you count the steel, the bigger spindle size, you know, everything that goes into it, um, you know, it just, it just brings a bigger price. It's what it is. So hopefully that helped to uh, kind of discuss and show you the differences between decks, you know, having a 100 series deck and then a 700 series deck side by side. Like I said, you don't normally see these two like this. So there it is. These mowers, each one in its line comes specific with a certain size mower deck. You're not going to really have an option to pick a different deck. So you can't necessarily get this E100 with like a 54 inch deck. They come paired with whatever deck Deer puts on them. As is pretty much all the tractors in their line until you get to the 700 series. Being this is more so like a legitimate tractor. They don't, they don't sell them with a deck. You have to buy the mower deck separate, but you have options then. You can get a 48, 54, or a 60 inch deck for these, but you don't have to get a deck because some people use them strictly for snow removal or whatever else. So you may only want to buy yours with a plow or a snow blower. A lot of extra cost comes into play there when you start adding some of those features. And even when you get the, you know, enclosed cab, it's a hard cab. And it's even heated off the engine coolant like your normal v like your car or truck would be so that adds a lot to the cost so that's why when you're seeing some of these costing you know tens of thousands of dollars that's the reason you know there's there's a lot more tractor there than what you have on something like a 100 series and there's tractors to fill everywhere in between here too this is just this is a very extreme comparison one end to the other there's the 200 series, the 300 series, and the 500 series in between these ones specifically. And there's tons of other models if you go, you know, back a number of years. The 200 series is pretty much like this one. 
except it's going to have, a, I think, a better engine, maybe like a better type of engine and then possibly a heavier deck. But it's still the same frame, same body and everything. When you get up to the 3 and 500 series, those two are similar. However, the 500 is going to be more ground engaging capable. You're going to start getting into stuff with hydraulics. And there again, like I mentioned, the price points all kind of fill throughout. The features get more plentiful and better. And then you get up to the 700 and then you pretty much get everything. And I think that's about all I got. I think I hit all the major points. You know, I could go in probably for hours talking about the differences between these two and showing different things. I will mention uh, the fender decks on these. They're actually, believe it or not, they're a polymer on the 700 and then stamped steel on the 100. So a lot of people like to think, oh man, I want steel on my tractor. I want it to be metal. Like, okay, but you know, steel corrodes plastic doesn't uh steel can dent the plastic isn't really going to dent i mean you can chip either of them so that's not really an argument and then people wonder why you know you're paying all this much for like a 700 series tractor why is it all plastic well it's not necessarily just because they're trying to cheapen them up they have weight limits that they need to stay under from everything i can understand in order to keep from having to have like a rollover protection system or different safety features on these. So they need to do certain things to keep the weight down so that they can put weight into the frame and the transaxle and the other things that give you the utility. Whereas something like this, it's a lot cheaper to make these pans. So that's just another reason you see that they can sell these for quite a bit less. So again, I didn't want this video to be, you know, bashing one or the other or talking one or the other up. Purely the whole idea here is to uh, just kind of highlight why these things cost what they do and what the major difference is and how just because they're green and yellow doesn't mean they're all built the same. I do love both of these machines. I mean, of course, I love my 758. But I mean, I wouldn't necessarily not buy one of these you know if if you're someone that just has a yard that they need to get mowed by all means these things are fantastic mine lasted me a number of years and i probably abused it a little harder than i should have and it was still running fine and you'll still have a pretty good de resale value out of them as long as you keep them nice maintenance is a big thing you always got to maintain your stuff as long as you maintain it it'll serve you well and you'll get your money's worth out of them. And that's all I got for this video. Hopefully it was useful. Hopefully you uh, enjoyed seeing the differences between these two machines. And hopefully now you have an understanding of why one costs way different than the other. As I mentioned multiple times, both of these machines are great machines. Uh, they're both going to get the job done for what they're designed to do. Just remember, if you're in something like this, you can't overwork it. Remember, if you're trying to get into something like this, it's not gonna be cheap. It's just the way it is. It goes into utility, all the things I showed, you know, the different capabilities. Uh, both machines very capable. Deer does a fantastic job at making sure you can do things with both machines. You can get a snow plow, a snow blower, a bagger, all kinds of attachments for this, as well as all the tow behind attachments. You can get the same for this, they're just bigger, they can do more work faster, uh, but like I said, you pay for it. So, uh, if you have any questions, anything like that, please let me know. Uh, I love getting back to questions, comments, things like that. I love trying to help people out. So if you still have anything that you need to know about, let me know. I'll do my best. Other than that, thanks for watching. Have a good one.